Welcome back to the Balance Bully Podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men. I'm your host, Nikita Renthikpen. I am always thrilled, ecstatic, high, vibrating, all the things with you in this place because I care and I do truly want you to keep listening. So today is a fantastically potent human. She is very understated as in she's shy and introverted and amazing and phenomenal and incredible in so many different ways. I had the opportunity to meet her a few months back, uh, but I really deepened when we had a one-on-one conversation that if I remember, our tea time was supposed to be roughly 20 to 30 minutes. And I'm pretty sure that I shut down the clubhouse in our conversation when we were talking because we we just couldn't let go of each other. It was such a phenomenal, organic, beautiful dance that we were doing with each other. And I was honored and asked her if she would do me the honor and privilege of being on the Balance Bully podcast because I only bring you the most potent humans, people. All right, let me introduce you. Miss Valerie Menzel. She is a Gallup trained Clifton Strengths coach and principal for Strengths Savvy. That's the name of her business, guys. Make sure you write that down. Strengths Savvy. It's a company that provides coaching and team building and leadership workshops for companies, families, students, and individuals. Let me just say, before I go any further in her bio, Valerie is amazing and literally knows strengths inside out, not just high level. For those of you who have never taken the assessment, it kind of spits out numbers based on the way that you answer, not numbers, excuse me, labels, if you will, and categories of whether or not you are more strategic or if you're a more activating person, which is my number one, which I'm sure most of you have, if you're familiar, you've gotten. I can activate an ant to lift a mountain and climb a hill in their sleep with their eyes closed and their legs tied behind their back because I'm an activator first and foremost. (laughs) But then there's all these other supporting strengths and all these other things that really help you once you understand it, deepen into what your best organic self is, where you might need to work a little bit more or where you might need to hire, defer or delegate out because those are not your top strengths and maybe not worth your energy and trying to like double down on them without pulling yourself into a space of perfectionism that if you know anything about it, it's a form of bondage. You don't want to be it. If you are a perfectionist, like so many people in my family, I'm a reformed perfectionist. You want to be really, really mindful to figure out a way to cut the tie because it's holding you back from your greatness. Soapbox aside, Valerie's work experience also includes hosting and producing television shows public speaking. I heard her. She's amazing. She's so creative and talented and very funny, by the way. Voiceover work, managing outreach for one of the nation's most respected nonprofits and 15 years of producing photo shoots and managing the creative planning department, makes so much sense now, of a Fortune 500 cosmetics company. Valerie, welcome to the BBP. How are you today? Oh, I am delighted and so tickled to be here with you, Nikita. I'm just overwhelmed that you asked. It was such a a lovely ask. And uh, thank you so much for having me here. I feel privileged and just so, so happy to be here. Well, I'm glad you were. Like, you know, we shut it down. (laughs) We did. We shut it down. (laughs) I was was like, I'm so sorry. I took it your whole time. It was, it was worth it. You were worth it. We were worth it. It was a great conversation that really, I think for me personally, it helps get past the pretense that usually comes in those early conversations, especially when you meet someone um, for the ambitious women that are listening to this, that have any kind of networking and connecting that they must do as a part of their roles or responsibilities. It can be draining, right? Like you meet a ton of people. You hope that some of those conversations lead to strategic partnerships or power partnerships or just really good connections where you can grow with each other in various ways. But many times it's a a hot flash in a pan, right? Like a, I met you, I met you, great. And then you never hear from or connect to 
those people again and knowing that we not only connected, we connected. Yes. <laughs> and I have to say uh, for everybody out there, I mean, I, I felt so privileged because, you know, everybody wanted Nikita's attention. Like everybody wanted to be her new best friend. <laughs> I actually got to dance with her. I was like, everybody wants to dance with Nikita, but I get to do it. I just felt like I won the lottery. It was very exciting. You, know, oh, you so. make me feel so special. And I'm like blushing so hard right now <laughs> that I think my cheeks match my red lipstick. This is ridiculous. Oh, and, oh. <laughs> no, thank you. You you and your business partner, Leanne, really mm-hmm. left an impression. You guys did amazing. You were a kind of a mix of keynote, signature presentation, threaded through theme of the three-day mm-hmm. retreat, and a little MC, like, you know, with some of the different parts and some of the creative ways you were able to pattern interrupt, you know, some of the other um, workshops and things that were going on. And you kind of came out blazing with information and support that we needed. And that made me think you and I were talking in the green room a little earlier mm-hmm. before we got started and recording about how you guys connected, because that's a big thing to connect with someone as a friend. Great. To work on some projects together. Fine. But to start a business together, like that's that's not networking. That is connecting on a whole nother intimate level that clearly allowed you to thrive and grow and, and blossom in so many ways in your company. But I was curious about how that connecting and then deciding to create a business together or I don't know, did you start the business together or was the business already there and then you came together? Like, how did that work? I want to know, Valerie, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, it was a happy accident. You know, it was a God moment. Um, we actually literally met at church. They had a, a ministry of, uh, they had a strengths program at the, at the parish and um, they had, you know, a group of people got together and became coaches mm-hmm. to you know, volunteer their time to coach people through the results and kind of help people understand what it was all about. Nice. And the two of us happened to be, end up in that same ministry together. Mm. So we met by accident, by chance. And I, you know, again, happy accident, mm. God moment. Um, and you know, what's crazy, Nikita, is that I am not an entrepreneur in my heart. <laughs> like that is not my thing. Yeah. And I never even imagined in a million years that I'd ever create my own company, that I'd ever do anything like this. And it has just sort of spiraled into something that I never even expected, Mm -hmm. but in a beautiful way. And so when I first met Leanne, it's funny. um, She thought I didn't like her. (laughs) Uh, One of my talents, one of, one of my talents is, um, is a relator Mm -hmm. and they can sometimes come off as a little aloof or clicky or distant because we're socially cautious. You know, I'm not going to be your best friend tomorrow. I need to get to know you a little bit. I need you to know me. I need Mm -hmm. you to know I need to know you, you know, we're very genuine, like authentic, real people and, you know, place a lot of, 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 of um, value on trust and yes. like that. We friend Ooh. for life, right? Yes. Am I speaking your language? Cause yes. I have, a, I felt this connection with you because I'm like, she speaks my language. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's in my top. I am a relator yeah. through and through, which is why I dance before I date. There you go. All the time. Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. You know, but once you do, mm-hmm. once you connect with somebody, it's for life. Yes. Like, I don't let go of people. I call them my little gems. I pick them up along the way and I never let go. You know, my Christmas card list is ridiculous, but it's <laughs> only those people that are those little gems that I've met all throughout my life, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but in any regard, um, she didn't think I liked her because I'm a relator and I'm not like all over you all of a sudden. And she is the opposite. Mm-hmm. She's a woo. So she's like never met a stranger, talks to everybody, you know, has a huge wide social circle. And so we're very opposite. This is the the fascinating thing is that our personalities are opposite. Our work styles are opposite. Even our our talents, there's some, we have some similarities, but we have a lot of opposites. And I don't know if it was the opposites attract kind of thing. (laughs) It was, you know, this crazy thing that happened is that um, this nonprofit approached us and asked our our little ministry group, would anybody do a, you know, a team building session for us? Mm -hmm. Strengths. And Leanne and I happened to both raise our hands and say, sure, be happy to help you. And we had to work together to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And it was so successful Mm -hmm. and it was so well received. And we had so much fun. We looked at each other and we're like, why don't we just do this for real? So then we started meeting, started plotting it out, planning it out, putting a website together. You know, like all the pieces started to come together without any plan. Wow. Like totally by the seat of our pants. You know, it was kind of crazy. Like it was never intentional. And 
it's just sort of built on itself and built on itself and built on itself. And now we've got it down to our, you know, we kind of have innately just sort of segued into the things that we're naturally really good at. So here we are talking about strengths all the time and teaching other people how to do that. Come on. We mm-hmm. did it ourselves, which is kind of interesting, you know. We talked about the fact that she has an accounting background, but I do the accounting for the for our company, which is hilarious. You know, I have, <laughs> right, I have a background, but she does all the you know the sales pitches, right? So it's it's just funny how we are really a yin and yang, and that's one of the things that people love about our presentations is that we have that that opposite energy that makes it more interesting and dynamic. And we love to laugh, yeah. love to have fun. Yeah. And so I think you know people love our sessions because they're they're a lot of fun. They learn a lot. Mm-hmm. People are saying, so much, but I had such a great time. And, you know, because nobody wants to be sitting yacked at for hours and hours, nobody learns that way. That's you, right. you learn more in a half hour of play than four hours of, you know, lecture. Come on, so, listen, don't make me take off my bunny slippers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said so many things so beautifully, including how you can have people with very different strengths, pun intended here when I use it that way, but very right. different strengths that come together. And when you visualize the yin and yang, yin and yang symbols, they fit perfectly mm-hmm. together. Mm-hmm. And exactly. there's beauty in the contrast between the black and the white of the symbolism and all the different pieces that go into that visually. But I do see you that way. Just you mm-hmm. know, experiencing you professionally, And then having tea with you personally, I do see how that's such a beautiful fit, which a lot of people, and I'm sure you've come across this in various aspects of your very layered background, people are afraid Mm -hmm. to create that you started with an accident that became on purpose, right? The accidental Mm -hmm. on purpose business. And some people will have that synergy in the beginning, the way you two did, where it was a little rocky. I've definitely had that too, that same relator, like, okay, Mm -hmm. I don't know how to take Nikita. And I'm like, Nikita is amazing. I just have to welcome you into it. And I have to trust that I can do that. And when we're just meeting in certain situations, you have to be a little bit more guarded because it's the safest thing to do. Sure. And church is no different, right? <laughs> like you, it's, de- it's dealt with, you know, a lot of people are hurting and aching and they came to get healed. So you're not necessarily dealing with the best version of people all the time when they're in the beautiful strength of vulnerability in church. Yes. Um, yes. But that happy accident that started, some people will connect and be like, oh, okay, this is good. We worked really well together for that one workshop, that team building yeah. project. Yeah. And then they'll let it fly because they're afraid to go deeper to get more and intimacy for me is just deepening connection to be more intimate in a professional, you know, but personalized way with someone who would potentially be a colleague, but then become a business partner. Like that is very, that's almost as intimate as marriage, right? Like that's very intimate. What may you, if you can remember, because I know it's been a minute, but when you think about what those early days were and having those first lunches together or dinners together when you were just talking, you know, just dreaming out loud, when you were dreaming yeah. out loud about what your company could be for Strength Savvy, even just coming up with a name, did yes. did you have any, I don't want to, I'm trying to be mindful of my words on, for so many reasons, but the mm-hmm. main one is I want to make sure that I'm not toning it in a way that I don't mean it. So part of me wants to just say, did you ever have any hesitation? But the other part of me is like, no, no, no. It's so much deeper than that. Was there any part of you that was nervous about going forward, even though your spirit was like, yes, yes, but your history with other relationships or other people who maybe didn't prove themselves to be such a good compliment in their opposition, op- oppositeness and all of it. Mm-hmm. Did any of that junk chatter stuff come up for you at all? When you were creating this? I don't remember any like huge moments Mm -hmm. like that of like fear or, or, you know, um, you know, kind of being blocked by that. But I, of course, there's always, you know, a little bit of hesitation. Like, is this, you know, is this really going to go anywhere? Can Mm -hmm. I really trust you? Just like when you're dating someone, right? Like Mm -hmm. getting to know you better. And, you know, we genuinely really liked each other. So we became friends as well, which I think is part of the magic. But I think we both were just, there's so many things that we saw eye to eye. Like we both really understand the beauty of the whole strengths concept Mm -hmm. and strength psychology. And we both are 
like geek out about it, mm-hmm. right? Nerd so life. Common, you know, that common bond right mm-hmm. away. And, um, and I think, you know, even my, even though I was, you know, I'm a New Yorker, I'm a little jaded, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I, don't, I, I don't jump right in, but, um, you know, and she was more, I think, real go, 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 go. But I think we were, you know, we were kind of testing the waters. And even though I was kind of maybe a little, 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 a little touchy, maybe here and there, but it just always worked out beautifully. And we always just had a lot of trust and really enjoyed being together and really saw eye to eye. And we were both very excited about the whole concept of sharing this amazing tool with people. It's so powerful. And it made a tremendous difference in the life of lives of people we've seen ourselves, other, you know, everyone we talked to, it, it made a huge difference in my relationship with my son, for example. That's why I really got excited about it. Nice. But, you know, it, the whole concept of strengths is like, you know, people often feel deficient because they're different, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They, they, they overvalue what they aren't and they undervalue what they are. But, you know, every single human being has a talent they can build a life on. It's your uniqueness that gives you your superpower. Yes. You know, everybody has something amazing to bring to the table. It's just different. And when you can understand that, all of a sudden the light bulbs go off. You yeah. understand yeah. why people do the way they, what they do. You know, you know, how it is that this person next to you, thinks differently, sees differently, is observing things differently. I always tell people we're all sitting in the same room experiencing this together, but we're all experiencing it differently based on how we're wired. And when you understand that, all of a sudden you're more compassionate, more understanding, you communicate better, you give people grace, you know, and the world could use more of that. So we both got really on fire about, we need to share this, you know, it completely changed, you know, a lot of lives that we were working with people, you know, we were, we both of us had coached hundreds of people by the time we were actually working together and yeah. seeing how dramatic it was. And when we saw that, we're like, you know, this is something that everybody can use. Cause it's not just about business. It's about your life. It's about your family. It's about putting yourself in the right place in the world, you know, making better decisions for yourself. That's why yeah. we love to do kids. We love to do families. You know, I had a girlfriend who had me do her whole family as a Christmas present. Mm. And I came over to her house lunch. She spent the day, you know, and I, I did a session with her whole family and it was amazing, yeah. you know? So it's like understanding those people around you and, you know, oh, they're not trying to drive me crazy. They're just different than I am. They just see things or need different things than I do. And then it just opens up your heart, you know, and I feel like the world needs that. And we're trying to heal. We're trying to help, yes. you know, that's, that's our goal. And, um, and we've, we've just been really blessed and fortunate to be able to do that. I love it. Valerie, you hit on so many things when you were speaking, um, because there is a part of me that's like a rain woman on the inside. So I see like colors and (laughs) images when people are talking, like I'm painting a whole beautiful painting with what you're sharing to emotionally bond with what you're saying. Excuse me. And one of the things that you said in the beginning was it's very much like dating. We became friends first. Yeah. which is ideal for anyone who's listening to this that hasn't attracted their forever lover yet. And I use those words very seriously, attract, not mm-hmm. find. Um, you, when you're allowing yourself to date and become friends with, you will see that there are so many humans that may not be your forever lover human, but they were mm-hmm. definitely a good training will practice for you. Mm-hmm. And some yeah. people hide in the, oh, I don't want to date because no one's worth it, whatever. I just want to find my person. It's usually not the first person, right? Like it's right. You usually got to have right. a little bit of training little activity with it. But it also corresponds with what you were saying with you didn't intend to find a business partner, attract, excuse right. me, a business partner. But because right. you were willing to look at what are your core moralistic similarities, which I think is very important. If one of you is like, I hate humans, <laughs> you know what I'm this saying? Is this, isn't gonna this is going to be a really hard <laughs> business to have, right? Especially because yeah. Strength Savvy is about uplifting and healing, yes. giving clarity, helping people yes. see, you know, the purpose that's already there, but might have been buried under other mm-hmm. people's pushing down of their difference and not embracing it as a beautiful diversity of experience when they have it. But also some people would look at some of their strengths, not knowing that they were strengths and think that they were the, not the best parts of them. 
Right. Especially if you're someone who's very analytical and very strategic, you might have right. been bullied because you were such a nerd, right? Like, or all the things, um, or yes. even in your own family, had people try to minimize your brilliance of sorts because you were always being too formal. And they mm-hmm. were just like, hey, we're just at a barbecue, like, let's kick back. But that was a strength of you to be able to see, hey, there's a better way to grill this chicken. <laughs> The, yes. You know, the other way and the fact that you guys, you and Leanne were able to organically, I'm sure it wasn't just like a conversation or a one off mm-hmm. conversation, but be able to look at, OK, you believe in God. I believe in God. You have yes. faith, not just believe, but you have faith in this. I have faith in this. All right. This is how we feel about people. Hey, I have excellent skills. You know, she has an accountant, but just like chefs that don't cook at home. Doesn't mean they don't know how to. It's just right. they they might resent doing the same thing all the time. So the fact right. that she was a previous accountant and then decided not to do the accounting because that wasn't where she wanted to really focus this next chapter of her life and right. vice versa for you with sales. Like, yes, I'm good at it. I could do it. It, it is what it is. But that's not what I want to do in the business mm-hmm. that I'm creating. And right. you attracting someone who honored that for you is similar to attracting a forever lover. And I do mean this in the romantic biblical marital sense that also honors that, yes, they might have met you when you was wilding out in your (laughs) twenties, but now you're moving into a different chapter of yourself and they're honoring that and saying yes to continuing and to deepening their love with you in this new version of you. That's very different than the version Mm -hmm. that maybe they got introduced or someone told them who you were, but that's not actually where you were growing into. Did that make sense? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. I mean, gosh, I mean, we, you know, we all develop over time, even the strengths, you know, there's the raw form of it and then there's the mature form of it. So all of us are born, you know, with that certain DNA, right? You're Mm -hmm. born with that wiring in your brain. And maybe as a child, you know, if you're, if you're a command, for example, you know, you were born, you know, this way. And as a child, you know, they would have seen those traits coming out in you. You could talk to your parents and say, did you see this in me? Because they will absolutely say, oh yeah, you know, you were that kid who was bossing everybody around. And, you know, maybe you were, you came off as like the bully or whatever, Mm -hmm. but then over, then you develop Mm -hmm. and you mature and you have life experience and, you know, you learn knowledge and you become this very charismatic leader. So, you know, we change and we morph through life anyway. And the strengths do as well, you know, and we always talk about that. Like, you know, the way it showed up for you when you were younger is probably different than it is now. And it also depends on what part of your life you're in, like what lens you're looking through at the time. Mm-hmm. And people always ask us, if I take the assessment a second time, am I going to get a different result? And the answer is yes and no. That's a good you know, question. Most of the time, you know, most of the time, what we do is we break down the 34 because there's 34 mm-hmm. all together and everybody has them all, but just in various degrees, but we break them down and we talk about what's at your top third. Mm-hmm. Like we break it into three chunks though. That's always me, sometimes me, and that's rarely me. Mm-hmm. Like three chunks, right. So the top third, which could be one through 10, one through 15, whatever, you know, everybody's different. Mm-hmm. Those are your superpowers. That's what you use every day, all the time. It's like the stuff that's on your desktop, right? Yeah. And then the ones in the middle are a drawer that you're pulling out of because you can access them, you can use them, but they're not you at your best. Yeah. And then the ones that are on the bottom of the list, that bottom third, they're down the hall <laughs> in a cabinet, buried under a bunch of crap. You had to <laughs> dig really hard to get to them, you know, but you may have to pull on some of those things depending on the situation. Yeah. Depending on what's going on, maybe there's a crisis, maybe there's, you know, something happening in your life that you really have to respond to, you know, and you pull on things that you have to pull on in the moment. Mm -hmm. But the go to that top third is probably always going to be your top third. It may shift around depending on what's happening, but usually the way it works out and we've had people test it, you know, usually that top third stays the same, Mm -hmm. right? And that's really all that matters. It doesn't matter what's number one and what's number 10. What matters is that top third because you are more than just your top five. You own them all. And the idea is embrace that, make the most of that, and then leverage what you don't have with somebody who has that. That's that complimentary thing that we're talking about. Like when you figure out, you know, the idea is not to look at the bottom of the list because people naturally were doing that at the beginning. And that's why Gallup started charging $1,500 to take this thing because they didn't want people to have the whole list. That part. (laughs) Humans, right? We always want to know what's wrong with us. What can I fix? Mm -hmm. You know, what's wrong with me? Let me Mm -hmm. fix my weaknesses. 
And that, you know, strength psychology says you're only going to get mediocre results because you're never going to be great at the stuff that's at the bottom mm-hmm. of your list. You just aren't. Yeah. You can pour as much as you want into that. You're only going to get so much improvement. Yeah. Why would you waste your precious time on this earth? Yeah pouring yourself into your lesser talents as we call them, you know, other people call them weaknesses, you know, into your weaknesses, trying to make those better. Why not take what's fabulous about you and explode that, yes. you know, pour everything into that, you know, and that's where you shine. That's where you contribute the most. That's where you're at your best. Right. So the idea of that complimentary thing though, is really great because once you understand, Oh, this is what I'm, what are my lesser talents? Those are the people I need to seek out to partner with mm-hmm. because they have what I don't have. So when everybody's doing their thing, it's a beautiful synergy, yes. right? And that's the idea, like partner with the people who have what you don't have. Yeah. They get to do what they love to do. You get to do what you love to do. And everybody's all the better for it, you know? And it's, you know, it's how strategy works, right? You always play to your strengths. That's how you win. Yeah. Right. If you have a, a winning football team. You do not have the quarterback spending all his practices, you know, kicking, you don't do that. Why would it's you do that? Insufficient, right? <laughs> right? It doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing with strengths. So the compliment thing is great though, because you can realize, oh, you know what? This person drives me crazy because they're opposite of me, mm-hmm. but we help each other. Yes. And if we give each other, you know, if we can come to the middle and we can give each other grace and we can understand, then we can all work together beautifully. And we've seen that over and over and over again in our coaching. You know, we have, um, you know, we see it in couples, a lot of times opposites attract Come on. and you'll see that, you know, there's this, there's these two that are called activator and developer or um, deliberative. So the deliberative is slow to act. Mm-hmm. They're very cautious. They make very careful decisions. The activator like you and Nikita, they're off the blocks. They want to go yep. like the moment is now let's move. And if we're going to, you know, jump off the cliff and there's no water there, we'll course tr- correct. We'll figure something else out, you <laughs> yes. know, um, and the deliberate is going to be pulling you off the edge going, whoa, wait a minute. Don't jump yet. Let's think about this. You know, let's investigate, you know, that's so um, true. So, but they, t- but they help each other. Yeah. You know, we often see them married to each mm-hmm. other because the activator slows the, you know, speeds up the deliberative, the deliberative, you know, speeds up the, or slows down the activator yeah. and they partner together. They help each other. So when we can do that, you know, that's when we really come together, you know, we can accept each other's differences for being something positive and beautiful, yes. you know, and that spills over into all kinds of good things in the world. Right. So all the juiciness. Yeah, all the juiciness. And we've seen it in, in, you know, working people like that deliberative activator thing. You know, the one woman who was an activator was getting so frustrated with her coworker because he wasn't answering her right away mm. on the email. And the, and, the, and the guy has, you know, is deliberative. And he's like, I just need time to think mm-hmm. it through and I'll get back to you. So I was like, look, you want three seconds, an answer in three seconds, and you want an answer in three years. How about three days? Okay. You know, <laughs> like, let's come to a middle point. And, you know, and you know what? They worked together beautifully yes. after that. They understood each other. They all got it all of a sudden. You're not trying to drive me crazy. You're not just bucking the system. Mm-hmm. You're not being difficult. You're being yourself. Yes. And these are your needs. This is what, you know, you're all about. And once I understand that, okay, now I know how to work with you. Now I know how to communicate with you. Yeah. Right. Now, I love that because it was both recognition first, yeah. the, the awareness, but then also implementation. And Mm -hmm. that's where I think sometimes a lot of corporations that will hire different teams to do 360 feedback and all some of the other standards, the disc and whatever, whatever, is yes, they're great for recognition, but are you infusing it? Are you implementing it to really understand? I love that example, Valerie, that you gave with the coworkers. I love all of them, but especially with the coworkers as your latter example, does that make me think of uh, many of the humans that I attract? are ambitious and overachieving. Yeah. Phenomenal. I love it. It's it's um, They're mirroring who I am, right? Which is why I attract them. I totally get it. And I realized that one of the biggest lessons I had to learn in my almost 13 years of business was teaching people how to respond to me, how to react to me, how to be proactive with me without coming across all know it all ish. I don't know what the, what the phrase phrase would be, but I'm um, just like I know everything and all of it because I am an ambitious human who is also an overachiever who's learned to be more lazy, right? To embrace yeah. and honor my need for rest and all that. But I, many of the people I track haven't quite learned that yet. So it could, I could come across at times like I'm just some guru, which is a term that boggles me, and I am not. I do not attract myself to that at all. 
<laughs> but I can come across in a different way sometimes. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, here's the solution. Here's an opportunity. One, I had to learn that not everyone wants to receive your solution. Even if they've presented a problem, you have to be invited into that space or else you are fixing something or someone who will later resent you for that very thing. So being very, very mindful of that. And even when they ask, still being very mindful of that. But also because I am an activator, that is my top strength. And when you look at the grid and the numbers, it's like a lot of energy is an an activator for all of me. I was laughing when you talked about the husband and wife because I'm like, oh, that is so me and mine of 30 years because I'm like, oh, I'll just spit and make some water for us to fly across. And he's like, there's no water. That's not (laughs) going to be. No spitting requires. I'm like, oh, I will make this happen. We will get to the other side, right? Like, I'm definitely that person that needs to, you know, receive that permission to slow down and and all of it. But for your coworker um, example that you gave, It made me think of a couple of clients I have specifically in mind where one of the little tidbits that I gave them is, it's okay, write the email, write the response, write the thing, but schedule it to send. Because Mm -hmm. one of the issues that they were having on the back end of that, uh, you know, one at three seconds, give it, that's what they're used to, is they were moving into a space in their life where they wanted to slow down. They wanted Mm -hmm. to stop having to answer emails and all the things on vacation and to really Mm -hmm. honor their off time as real off time and not work time that they said was a vacation, but they really just used it to do more work without all the phone calls and meetings. So one of the things, because it's hard to get people to flip that switch, right? Mm -hmm. But one of them was like, it's okay, right? In the very beginning of this new habit that you're trying to create, so these neurons fire together and wire together and all the nerdy things to do. Go ahead right. and write it, but don't send it. Schedule it for an appropriate time where now you want to train people to re- to expect to receive an email in one to three days versus, yeah. oh, it doesn't matter that Valerie's in Paris. I know she'll email me in the next 10 minutes. Time yes. zone difference and all. It doesn't matter because that's yeah. what I can depend on. And then right. Valerie will get this version of Valerie that I just made up, guys. <laughs> Valerie will get frustrated. She's like, oh, all these emails are coming in. Because you're answering them and people are following up in real time. But if you schedule them out, you can still get that dopamine reward hit of I checked it off. I got it done before vacation started or before time off started or before my bathroom break started, you know, whatever it is, (laughs) because we both know people who will carry that phone right with them. Right. (laughs) And and specifically for work, not just for like, you know, nonsensical scrolling or whatever, but that way you sent it, but it's not going to happen in real time where you're now playing tennis with yeah. someone. And that was just yeah. one of the small things that you made me think of when you were talking about that coworker, like let's, let's create some version of compromise between the yes. three seconds and the three years by choosing a three day. Sometimes yeah. when you're on the other side of that and you're trying to train yourself to be a new person, that means allowing people to see the new you even before you become it, which is mm-hmm. acting as if, right? Act yeah. as if you're already there they thought you just answered that email three days later. You did it in the moment because you're still working yeah. on it, but they yes. didn't get it for us. Assuming, of course, guys, I don't want you to be late, right? Like we're not yeah, saying yeah, miss yeah. deadlines just for the purpose yeah. of, you know, trying to train your coworkers and your colleagues. But assuming that you have a little bandwidth, maybe you're uh, like me and I know my youngest, we are very ridiculous. I want things off my list. So I will get them done and all of it, but I won't necessarily give them to the human expecting it two weeks early just because I got it done two weeks early. They might get it three days early because I scheduled to send it because I don't want any false expectation that, oh, yeah, we said June 1st, but Nikita's going to get it by May 15th. No, because I might really need till June 1st. So just being really mindful of that. I thought that that was a beautiful example that you gave with both the husband and wife, but also yeah. with the coworkers, because those are real, real issues that are help that are keeping people from going deeper into those happy accidents and yes. to create something beautiful business or not on purpose, right. because they're afraid that the, the person will treat them the way they treat themselves, even yeah. though they well, want to become a different version of who they were always meant to be. 
Right. And exactly. And that's the other thing that, you know, our strengths work is also about, you know, your own self-awareness, yes. right? Or your own blind spots and achievers. What you're talking about, I have it too. Mm-hmm. Okay. I am a self-proclaimed, you know, people pleasing workaholic mm-hmm. who is trying to become a lazy overachiever by <laughs> listening to your podcast. And I can't wait till that one is out because I'm right there with you. You know, us, the, the people who are achievers, you know, we're constantly yes. just project to the next, to the next, to the next. We don't stop to celebrate when we finished it. We're just moving on to the next thing, cross it off the list, move on, you know, and you throw that activator on top of that, which you've got going on. And it's like a grind, mm-hmm. you know, nonstop grind. So it's very, you have to be sort of that intentional thing. Yeah. But when you look at your, you know, what we try to help people with are those kind of blind spots and that self-awareness, because it is, it is a thing, you know, like when you understand what the balcony is versus the basement, which is how we describe Ooh, it, yes. you know, the dark side and the light side, you know, and too much of a good thing can be a not such a good thing, you know, and those become barrier labels. It's how people perceive you. It's how you train people to treat you, yep. right? But you don't even see it in yourself. Like you're not even aware. Mm. One of the great exercises we do is have people like give their top results to someone they know really well, mm. to people they know really well, and say, how do you see these show up in me? Mm. And they reflect back to you. Oh, this is how I see these things in you. You're like, wow, light bulbs go off. Because yeah. you're like, oh, I didn't realize I was doing that. I didn't realize that I've been doing that to myself all along, mm-hmm. you know? It's exactly what you're talking about. And achievers have that issue. You know, we work so hard. We're industrious people. And yeah, you know, you can go, go, go until you hit that burnout. Yeah. Until you, you know, and we, and the same with responsibility. That's probably high for you as well. They can't say no. Yes, it is. No <laughs> we get overcommitted because you know what? Nikita's going to do it. She's going to mm-hmm. do a great job. We can count on her. So give it to her. Mm-hmm. Even though she's got 10 million other things to do, she can add just one little thing to your plate, can't you? Listen. Right? Yeah, I've had that one too. That's one of my sicknesses. And, you know, <laughs> I was like, I have to say, I was probably like, you know, I, I hate to age myself, but like 40 years old. Mm-hmm. And and the first time I'd said no to somebody, you yeah. know, this someone said, oh, we'd love you to be on the board of our, our neighborhood the association. I'm like, no, thank you. Exactly. And then I said, did I just say that out loud? Like I couldn't, I was berating myself, like, but it felt so good, mm-hmm. you know? So I always tell my responsibilities yeah, if it's not a hell yeah, it's a no. Yes. You know, and you saying no allows someone else to say yes. And maybe it's a gift to them yes. because they get to do what they do best. Right. Mm, 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 mm. I agree with this with my whole body, <laughs> my yeah. whole body. It took me a long time to get to a healthy no. And I say healthy yeah. specifically because they're, and this comes up for people when they're trying to embrace no more. They right. feel like it has to be aggressive or hard or very high in ego. I'm like it doesn't. You can still be your kind, giving, loving self if that's who you truly are in your balcony, right? right. Of who, of who you are, but right. don't steep to this basement level version of yourself because you feel like you have to be aggressive so people won't ask for explanations because you know that happens. Well, mm-hmm. Valerie, what do, you, what do you mean you can't be a part of the board for the Neighborhood Association? Right. Why not? As right. if you have to explain yourself, right? So they right. they try to ar- almost armor themselves against any further conversation around the no that was already really difficult by being yes. very hard and aggressive. And right. I know that I challenged, I was challenged with that personally myself in my younger years because I was like, listen, you got one time mm-hmm. to ask me for an explanation that you don't deserve. And you want <laughs> Getting all of South Philly Nikita until I matured and grew. And my kids lovingly will say, no is my favorite word. I'm like, no, it's not. It's boundaries, actually. Yeah, I love it. It The boundaries thing. And that's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and then taking that a step further, I mean, we do a lot of... um, leadership training as well, yes. because you take this to the next level, mm-hmm. right? How do I manage people using strengths? And the whole idea is, you know, I always ask managers and leaders, I'm like, are you getting the most out of your people? Or are you getting the best out of them? Mm. You know, like, cause a really great leader creates more leaders, not more followers. Mm. And they, they take what's great about everyone and they capitalize on that, mm. you know, and leverage that, right? Because people are, the way they're really engaged, the way they really get fired up about work, the way they really get committed and really do their best is when they're getting to do the things they do well Ooh. all the time. When they're doing what they're best at. When they're up in that that top third of their list, yeah. that's where they shine. That's where they flow. That's where the beauty and the magic happens. And if you allow people that space to do that as often as they possibly can and pour more into that, yes. 
you're like on fire, you know? So it just, you can tell I'm, I just could go on and on about it. But No, I okay. love it, Valerie. I'm thinking, uh, I don't know what the original title of this episode was going to be, but I think I just found <laughs> it. Are you getting more or are you getting the best? Like yes. that is a significant question. You know how they say, ask the right questions, more powerful yeah. questions instead of, yes. you know, whatever the other version of that you know metaphor is. But that was yeah. a really powerful question. Are you getting the most out of your team or the best out of your team? And I can mm-hmm. see how strengths would be a really phenomenal way to help you. But I will pause for a moment and just pull myself back because I want to clarify for everyone listening to this. Yes, you can take the strength assessment on your own, and I encourage you to do so, but I more encourage you, more so encourage you to have someone like Strength Savvy help you understand what it means, because it's one thing to get the list with the kind Mm -hmm. of micro definition that it's giving. It's another Mm -hmm. to have a professional help you see what does this really mean in the context of how it was designed? But also, or and also, in parentheses, A and D, how does this show up for you in your personal life, with Mm -hmm. your romantic partner, with your parenting, with your, if you're a sandwich generation like I am, with your caregiving of elders and with, because you know, that can do a whole other thing to take you out of yourself if you're not really careful with that, especially when elderly parents might evoke the 15 year old (laughs) version of you (laughs) and and all of that, Um, as well as your colleagues and professions. And if you happen to have a business, even more so to be able Mm -hmm. to understand those dynamics of the behind the scenes work, the front scenes work and team, as well as if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I have a business and I, I don't like this term because I feel like it can be degrading in so many ways, but you guys will understand it when I say it. If you're a solopreneur and you don't mm-hmm. have team, but you still deal with outside outsource partners, vendors, um, and some version of procurement on some level, there's still a version to, to those relationships that will be display based on whether or not you're living in your balcony, your first top third, or you're in right. the middle or the basin, because you yeah. can show up in a really unkind way. And the, the little miniature story that I'll share about this before we wrap up, because um, God knows, I, Valerie, I will hold you here like we in the clubhouse all day yeah. and we'll be <laughs> And both, like you know what I mean. Now. And both of the dogs will be going like, "Hello, I gotta be walked." <laughs> um, <laughs> all the things. When we first started our company back in 2011 we, 2011, we had a brick and mortar, and my best friend was our front desk. Um, she was receptionist in the very beginning, and then became office manager. But no one knew. It's not like I introduced her as my best friend, right? Like we were very clear to have boundaries at work. It was full names you know, Chantel and Nikita when we were there. And then when we were cacking it up in the back on break time, it was key and chi, right? Like, you know, that was kind of how we divided it up. So we knew which hat to to wear when we were front of house, so to speak. Um, right. And we had a client, a potential client, they were being vetted to be a client. Unfortunately for them, they were disrespectful to her because they oh. made an assumption that because she wore a certain hat as receptionist office manager, that she was so beneath them that they thought that they could talk to her a certain way. So in the gist, they were using basement level energy with her, but try to use balcony with me. And you have to be really careful when you're, when you're not being mindful, one of your skills and your, um, what did you say? You didn't say weaknesses. You said, Lesser talents. Lesser talents. Thank you for that. <laughs> and lesser talents is to be really careful to be, pun intended here, as a balance and relationship advisor of the balance that is needed when you're engaging with other humans. Because mm-hmm. I know some of you, and myself included, have been in situations where you haven't shown someone the best version of you. And mm-hmm. now that was their impression. That was their only impression. That was their only opportunity. And now what they saw of you made them never want to see you again interact, Mm -hmm. do business, negotiate, project, man, whatever the potential possibilities were, but it can also make you lose something bigger. Like there were so many ways we could have helped that person, but because Mm -hmm. of the way that they treated her, and I knew that it was 
classism, right? Like it was role specific. They made an assumption about her worth because of her position, not knowing Mm -hmm. not only did she have it in with the boss, she was BFFs with the boss since 13. Like, be careful, people. You don't know (laughs) what you're going to do. And and an amazing, brilliant woman who was a stay at home mom and was really just looking for something to do that wasn't around the kids. Um, Amazing and brilliant. Notwithstanding, even if that wasn't her background, you don't treat people from your basement. Right. From that lower third. But you made me think about that when sometimes people are pulling from other places that are their lesser talents Mm -hmm. and not being really careful to stay Mm -hmm. in their balcony of talents and strengths. Yeah. I mean, and it happens in so many different ways, like even with, you know, our children, even the parenting, like this is a, this is so helpful for that. And that's what it really helped me with my son. But, you know, we think our children are many versions of us Mm -hmm. and they're not, Mm -hmm. you know, and we have to realize that they have their own ways and their own talents and their own, you know, ideas. And even with, with managing people, one of the things we tell managers, you don't manage people the way you need to be managed. You need to manage them the way that they need to be managed Mm -hmm. based on their talents are. Say that so again for the time, people in the back, Valerie. They they didn't they, yeah. they didn't hear you. Manage them how? <laughs> manage people not the way you need to be managed, but how they need to be managed. Mm. And that's really what it's all about. Like even with children, with your family, with everything, once you understand what their makeup is, it's so much easier for you to understand how to how to how to be in partnership with them, whatever that partnership is, you know. Yeah. There's a, a really great, I'll tell you this quick story. So we were coaching someone and she wanted to complain to her boss, you know, it was a, like they were in the C-suite, right? So they're upper uppers, whatever, going to go run and run to the big boss, complain. But we knew that he was a harmony mm-hmm. and he didn't like conflict, but he loved to help people. Mm-hmm. So we suggested to her instead of, you know, running in there, just complaining and blah, 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 blah. Why don't you ask, why don't you start off by saying, I need your help. And it changed everything immediately. He's like, well, of course, what can I do to help you? So immediately she wasn't, you know, the tattletale. She wasn't the difficult person. She wasn't the toxic person. And he was there to help her and he was happy to do it. And it changed the whole conversation. But that's just like a tiny example. It was a brilliant coaching moment that Leanne had with somebody, but it was a tiny example of what we do with all our relationships. Yeah. You know, I do. and when you understand where that person is, who that person is and how they're wired and not, you know, if it is the person at the front desk, that person needs to be honored and respected no matter what. That's right. You know, but, but that's what strengths does for you. It just, it does show you to, to find the beauty in everyone, you know what I mean? And to appreciate every person because everybody has something special about them. Right. Uh-huh. And, and that's what we're trying to get across. And you're right. Like, you know, so many companies will just have them do the assessment and then they put it in their desk. You know, I've done every assessment under the sun mm-hmm. and I, this is the only one. And I know, you know, mm-hmm. cause you're like me learner, learner, learner. Mm-hmm. Right. But none of them, I was able to put my hands around and say, this makes sense. This is a tool I can actually literally use. Yeah. People understand it. It's not esoteric. It's not airy fairy for lack of a better word, you know, like <laughs> out there in the room somewhere. It's, it's, it's simple. It's understand. You can understand it right away and you can use it, yes. but you need to have someone explain it to you because, you know, just reading it and taking it and putting it in a drawer will do nothing. So that's what one of our things we tell people, we have a unique and and fun way of people learning how to use it. That's how we, what we do with our business, but it's so important, you know, to, to foster understanding, to foster that kindness that we want to bring into the world. You know, it starts with understanding. It starts with compassion. It starts with, you know, giving people the opportunity to be who they are and and realize that everyone is so beautiful and special. If you give them that chance. 1000%. Oh my goodness. You, oh, you said so many things that, you know, I'm like, oh my God, we need to do like five more episodes. (laughs) So you, you did say a a latter word that you just use, which just, it makes me feel all gooey in a good way inside, (laughs) which is self-compassion. And that made me think of, you know, my signature question that I ask all experts is Mm -hmm. how are you creating self compassion for yourself by giving yourself permission to pause with all this great work that you're doing. You're also dealing with a lot of personalities, Valerie, like all all the back end, the front end. I know Leanne, you know, handles the sales part. So you guys can kind of dive into the more beautiful, more exciting parts (laughs) of the work, but that's still a lot of different energy, a lot of personalities, a lot of red tape with the various companies that you do Mm -hmm. leadership trainings for and the different things and their processes. So when you need to take a beat, how are you giving yourself permission to pause? 
Oh gosh. So I have, I've been working on myself for a long time, Nikita. I'm like you. I'm, I'm a learner and I love to dig and I love psychology and self-help and all of that. Um, but gratitude mm-hmm. um, is one of my, my huge, huge pieces that I just, it's, it's what I live by. Yeah. Right. So I have my, you know, write my gratefuls every day and I have my gratitude buddy where we share three grateful things that we're happy about for that day. You know, it could be simple things like, Oh, that delicious brownie. I'm so grateful for that brownie I had at lunch. So gratitude is a big one. Um, but one I love that I keep trying to, you know, and I'm certainly not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I am always having to retrain myself and teach myself over and again. But one that I love is the positive point. Um, I actually have a second one too, but the positive point. So the idea is like a white water, white water rafting guide mm-hmm. says, follow my positive point. Because he, what he realized is when he would point to the rocks and he said, watch out for those rocks, people would paddle right to the rocks. Right, right. So if he points his finger away mm-hmm. from the rocks where he wants people to go, they will automatically just follow his finger. Mm. Right. So follow the positive point. That's why race car drivers are told, don't look at the wall. If you're going to crash, look away from the wall. Yes. Or when you're learning to drive, they say, look where you want to go and your hands will automatically direct your car. Mm. So follow the positive point. That's another one. I, have. I love this. I and, never heard those examples. Those yeah. are powerful. Yeah. The follow, the positive point is a really good one. So in, you know, we all want control. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants control. And we, there's so little things we can control in life, but you're, your intention, you can control your focus. You can control what you focus on is what you get more of. Come on. You know? That's the Tetris effect. You know, you, you, if you focus on the positives, that's what you're going to get. You po- focus on all the negative and the crazy. That's what you're going to get more of. Right. But my last tip that I love as a sort of like a life hack is if you're feeling down and out or you're having a hard day, get up and wiggle your butt. Oh, I like <laughs> this. Cause it's very polyvagal theory. Like wiggle, yeah. wiggle the booty, get the, wiggle your get booty. things moving. That's oh, right. Yes. And I- I swear to you, if you do that, you will either laugh or smile, but you will instantly feel better. Yeah. So that's, what I, you know, if I'm really needed, I'll just. We're wiggling. We're wiggling. <laughs> I, I do love that. Then that's a, um, I mean, I loved everyone that you said, all of, all of the tips that you're infusing balance in your own life with, but I really extra like, cause I'm silly. So I love the like stand up wiggle. Wiggle your butt. Oh, that's the yeah. best. Especially anything with booty. It's like, yes. yes exactly. <laughs> right? Shake that booty. Shake it. That's right. And I'm you, sometimes I'll just walk in the bathroom and I'll shake my butt at my husband and he'll just laugh, you know, because he knows mm-hmm. my thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, start your day with that. You know, walk in, if you're having a bad day, walk into that, before you walk into that meeting, shake your butt, you know, like I love it. it just gets you out of your head and it, it will lift you up immediately. Yes. I promise you try it and you'll see what I'm saying. You will laugh or you will smile or something. Is gonna I smiled better. immediately as soon as you said it. It's like the, the five-year-old <laughs> and you're like, booty, booty, booty. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. Valerie, you have been such a gift and an honor. Mm-hmm. And thank you for spending such extended time with us today and oh. creating creating space in your schedule because I know you have a full, I will not say busy because that's not the B word that I like, but a very Mm -hmm. full and productive schedule. So thank you. I want to honor you for that extended time and ask how can people connect with you? Oh, well, thank you. First of all, it was my pleasure. It was an absolute privilege and honor to be here. And I just adore you and think the world of you. I love what you're doing and I love your podcast. So it is my pleasure. Um, but we have our, our Strength Savvy website, strengthsavvy.com. And I'm on Facebook as Valerie Menzel. I'm on LinkedIn as Valerie Menzel. Um, Strength Savvy has LinkedIn and Twitter as well. But um, we'd love to help whoever would like to delve in deeper into their strengths. Mm, that's perfect. You know, we have every single link at the bottom of the show notes to make sure everyone can get it. And I will say just as a reminder for people listening, yes, 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 yes. Take the assessment and in parentheses, yes, have someone like the experts at Strength Savvy help you to understand what it means for your life, your work, and your relationships. I cannot underline and highlight and embolden that enough. It makes a difference versus you and your smarty pants self, which is amazing and brilliant, but you being (laughs) in that dangerous place of I already know, which is like a very dangerous sentence to say, because then you're not leaving yourself room for growth. So just make sure that you get an expert to help you understand it. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nikita.
Balance Bowley listeners, you're amazing as always. Thank you for staying with me. I have two ask. If you are brand new, the first ask is for you. Make sure you hit subscribe so you get notifications. And please review the show. We have thousands of listeners and we only have a couple hundred reviews, people. Like, let's get on it. Let's get these reviews popping so we can make sure the algorithm knows the algorithm things. I don't know. Do the kids say that? Don't don't make fun of me. I'm, I'm a person with adult children t- trying to speak their language. So work with me. Seriously, make sure you do a review as well. And honestly, be honest. Give great feedback. We love five-star reviews. More importantly, we want honest reviews. So please make sure that you leave them. The second ask is for everyone listening, new and returning. I want you to think of one person, just one, if it's hundreds, hallelujah, but one person that can benefit from this episode, specifically hearing Valerie Menzel's story, her breakdown of strengths, and all of the beautiful ways that it can help leaders and individuals, as well as in your relationship people. So please make sure you do that. And again, you want to share it with multiple people, put it on your LinkedIn, tag a bunch of people. That is fine. Tag Valerie Menzel, tag Nikita Ren Thigpen. But I only ask for you to at least do with one person because we want this knowledge to ripple and not just stay in a silo. Other than that, I want you to enjoy the balance of your day. But remember, do it boldly. 